your host, Dan Rojas, and this is a very powerful engine that's running off of air. It'll actually run off of uh, compressed air or steam pretty much the same way. This is nothing more than a two-stroke engine. This is a regular engine that you're going to find in any weed eater or chainsaw. What defines this as a two-stroke engine is the amount of times that the piston has to travel up and down to complete a cycle. When the engine fires, the pistons push down and then gasoline sucked up through this area right here uh, and air is mixed in and it resets the piston and it's fired again. This is different than car engines in that car engines are four stroke so that piston actually goes up and down twice for each time that the, the um, spark plug fires. So what happens with this engine when we use it for an air engine, we remove the spark plug, which is up here, and we time it with, we are using a reed switch right here. All that this is, is a magnetic switch in there, so every time a magnet, in this case we're using a neodymium magnet to the outer side, comes around, it activates this and causes this uh, solenoid valve to open, pushing air in. Now, as the air comes in, it's only in there for about a quarter of the stroke, um, and then the air is instantly exhausted through here and as the piston comes up it resets and we hit it with air again so we're not filling the entire chamber with air like some steam engines do now some people think that that's a bad thing in reality what happens is you're only putting high compressed air into a really small space each time in a regular steam engine as that stroke gets longer the amount of air volume inside of that piston increases doubles and quadruples with, with each lengthening of the stroke which requires a lot more steam to produce basically a single stroke. While that does produce more power, it doesn't necessarily produce uh, more power to efficiency based over an entire run. This engine right here will run 10 minutes off of one fill of the compressor and it runs perfectly well at 20 psi or um, 125 psi it doesn't really matter for this one and that is at a quarter inch volume so what we're going to do i'm going to go ahead and hook this up this reed switch has an electrical uh, a battery hook to it so what we're going to do is set it it's not it's not mounted really good but what I'm going to do too is put some resistance on the outer, uh, the outermost portion of the flywheel, which is where you least, least want it to happen. I'm going to put some resistance on the outer portion of the fly. The outer portion is virtually impossible to stop with reasonable resistance, so the inner portion where a generator would attach would be very difficult to stop, meaning this will produce a lot of torque. So this engine really has had no modifications to it. There's no welding that's been done there's no boring there's no anything it just basically has a reed switch attached to it now to make something that runs a long time you would probably need to add a slide valve but the difference between the slide valve of an engine like this and one say for a regular steam engine is you only need to allow the air to come in it's going to exhaust all by itself this is a lot uh, more efficient of an engine than a regular steam engine because Regular steam engines need to let the steam come in, then they also need to open up a hole to allow the steam to squirt out through that tiny hole. There's a lot of force on an engine, even a double acting steam engine, as the steam escapes the opposite side. It basically is a really, it's force working against you. With this, the steam just, or the steam or compressed air just escapes out the exhaust as it normally would. and You don't have that force going back up. So what we're going to do is hook this up and I'm going to show you how easy it is to change the timing on this. Again, this battery is just used to energize the reed switch. So if I touch it to the ground, you can see I can actually run the engine by hand timing it. It's a little tricky to do. So this is why you need a reed switch for this case. Ouch! And he's not short it out, and that shit hurts when it, whenever you uh, touch this and you get, you actually get a nice tingle. So, I'm going to put this, you do this, you want to be really careful not to get your fingers near this stuff. Now I'm going to get a little close, but um, these engines, even though you made it and it's your 20 PSI of air in there, they'll take your finger off without even thinking about it. So, it's 
you wouldn't put your finger close to a gasoline engine, treat it the same way. Now, if you've ever heard an engine backfire in a regular car, that's because usually because the timing's off. We can simulate that. So what's happening is we're uh, we're that's that's an off sound right there. So the optimal is right about there. The backfire is up here. Yeah, this is a 20 psi, so it's not like. Ton of air, and again, this engine right here will run for about five to seven minutes. I've even had it run up to ten minutes on one tank, one uh, seven-gallon tank full of air. What gasoline engines like this have is something called a magneto, which is right here, and on their flywheel, there's two neodymium magnets that create uh, voltage spikes that is uh, causes the spark plug to fire. This is how the timing is set on these. They basically, when the piston's in the up position, the spark plug fires and it um, just keeps repeating the cycle over and over again. That's why these have a pull string when you start them. The pull string actually connects to this part. So you pull it, you get the process going, the gas is sucked in, the electrical charge is created there, so the spark plug fires. Without this, the engine would never run. So that's basically what causes that electrical spark. Now, those magnets can be used to run the reed switch in this case. I am uh, i didn't want to take this off right now. To set the timing with the magnet, with the way that we do it, it's pretty much wherever you have your reed switch set up. So, if you notice right here, the piston is in the process of coming down. So that's exactly where we want it. We want to fill it with air just when it's there. And then that piston starts to exhaust I don't know if you can see in there or not, but the exhaust is right there. And then it comes back up. Air, exhaust, and so that's the process that, we, that we're looking for. Now this engine has a lot of stress on it right now because the magneto's on there. These magnetos actually put a lot of resistance on the engine. You can hear, you can hear it actually, uh, this one's actually rubbing against it. So with that magneto off, this engine would fly about two times as faster and have more power. We don't need the magneto. This, in this, with this engine running, or this will produce 100, about 130 volts, but it's not necessarily a uh, voltage that we can use for anything. It does produce a pretty, it'll give you a nice zap if you have it. So I'm going to put this close to here. We're going to get it running. So now we're running. You notice, I don't know if you can see, it's going the opposite direction. I'm going to try to get it, get you a good shot of it close up. All right, so we're using the magnet to the innermost portion. I have to be really careful with my, my fingers here, so I'm going to get this set and hold on once I give it a little... And you can see that that really... Uh, there is a, this is an incredibly powerful engine. Now, just to show you, uh, we have our main tank right here, is high, but we have our regulator over here set lower. So we're at 20, 25 PSI on this side, the outermost portion, and And then if we want to reverse it. The reason that this seems to give you more power is because this magnet on the on the innermost portion of the flywheel is traveling slower because the diameter is slower in there. Whereas the, the magnet on the outermost portion of this bigger flywheel, it, or tire basically is all that it is, is traveling a lot faster. So this allows the uh, solenoid valve to stay open longer. Whereas this this is a shorter a shorter run, so this this is giving it less air. And again, the only reason that they're reversed is because of their relationship to each other. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the voltage that this creates. I've got this 
in the spark plug area and then over here we're grounded to the engine engine block and we're just gonna see what type of voltage this is set for alternating current right now and we're gonna see what this produces this is what this what would be fed to the spark plug usually the one that is actually running the magneto simultaneously. So it's going to be running this engine with the reed switch and the magneto. Here we go. In here, the... That's pretty cool. Now ideally the reed switch would need to be put right there right where the magneto is and again the magneto would there's no need to have it at all for what we're doing it's basically just putting unnecessary drag on this engine you can see like if I turn it it gets locked in position there but you can see it's pretty easy to convert a two-stroke engine into a steam engine you can also convert uh, compressors into steam engines you can convert uh, you could really just convert a car engine into a steam engine. It'd be pretty easy to do. There's also ways of converting engines like this or any gasoline engine that uses pistons into an electric engine using neodymium magnets and an electromagnetic field. It's uh, actually pretty amazing and it works really well. We're going to be covering that in future videos. The nice thing about small engines like this, you can buy brand new weed eaters for about $49 that have this exact setup in there. So for 49 bucks, you can make your own steam engine. Or you could be a little greener with that instead of tearing up a new item. You can go to a dump, basically where people dump all their junk. We went uh, a few times and I actually picked up three weed eaters that were just sitting on the walls. What usually happens is that pull start mechanism, the spring usually breaks in them and you'll see the cord hanging out. Well, you could fix them. It's really not that hard to do once you know what you're doing. Well, I don't know if you need three weed eaters. You can get a free steam engine out of the deal if uh, you know what you're doing. We're using a solenoid valve in this again. Um, solenoid valves do not have a extremely long lifespan for something like this where they're going to be doing three or four thousand cycles a minute. Probably run out in a month or so. So a uh, check valve or a slide valve. I say check valve with this because there's a way that you can attach a check valve to the top where the piston comes up, hits the check valve, opens the airflow, goes back down, check valve closes over and over and over again. I'll be showing that in a future video. It works great with top fed piston uh, with, where the spark plug sits right on top of the piston. Also, we're going to be working on uh, a slide valve for these so that way we can have the air go in to time it mechanically versus electronically. If I can find solenoids that last a really long time and have a great uh, millions of cycle life cycle to them, then you may as well just use one of those. Anyways, I'm going to get back to playing with this. I'm your host, Dan Rojas. Thank you for watching and enjoy our videos.